you very much for coming. I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to hand, hand over to Mark Steele. Thank you so much again. Come on. Thanks, thanks, uh, thanks very much. And this uh, impromptu theatre that we have on the, the corner of the street is marvellous. And I think it's really, really already uh, supported you uh, there, Dave. But to, the, the idea that we've got a campaigning, uh, a campaigning candidate for Labour whose slogan includes the council can't be asked. I think that's something that should be celebrated and probably there should be billboards, the council can't be asked. Generally, this election, really, if there was any logic, if there was any logic to, to the way that things were presented, to the way that things were accepted, Boris Johnson is someone who, in normal human circumstances, if you found out he was getting 30 votes across the whole of the country, you'd go, Oh shit, that's a bit disappointing. <laughs> this is someone who is so such an obvious serial liar. Someone who is obviously out for his own privileged Etonian, bullying Donian, bullying self. That it shouldn't really cost. Even the issue of Europe, which he wants to be campaigned on, it's them that have mucked it up. It's them. The, the reason it's mucked up, this is the most serious thing Britain's had to deal with for 75 years, and the people in charge have been David Davis and Boris Johnson. It's, yeah. like, it's like finding an unexploded bomb in your house and you're in the council and they send around Paul Gascoigne and a kangaroo. <laughs> These are people who have the extraordinary mischief that you almost have to admire, where they say, we are the party standing against the Metropolitan League. Against the elite, 17 of the cabinet, millionaires. They're not the elite, they must have won the money on scratch cards. <laughs> it's the elite. Jacob Rees Mogg stands in front of people until he was pushed out of the way. Straight, stood in front of people saying, It is imperative that we rescind the power of the elite, as I said this morning in Latin before my joust. <laughs> this is the. This is the party that then goes berserk about Labour, making up whatever it wants. Today they were saying, on Sunday rather, uh, Boris Johnson just makes up whatever he wants. He said, Labour are going to abolish MI5. Just makes it up. They're going to, whatever he wants, they're going to introduce women only gravity, men will be forced to float. <laughs> whatever they want to make, whatever it is, are just extraordinary things they say. At the moment they're campaigning on the grounds that Labour's document about the NHS as links to the Russians. This is from the party that actually suppressed a real, existing, actual report that's, that from the Russians that they said they didn't want it to come out until after the election. It's almost as if the things they know people don't like about Boris Johnson, they're going to actually say it's Labour doing them. Tomorrow Johnson will say, do you know Jeremy Corbyn doesn't even say how many children he's got? This is... <laughs> And the NHS document, the NHS document that they're talking about is one in which Matt Hancock assured us, the health secretary assured us, shouldn't worry us at all because the document that Labour have found that says that there were, uh, that the NHS is to be used in trade talks with Donald Trump, apparently that's not the case, Matt Hancock assured us, because in the document about trade talks with uh, Donald Trump, the NHS was only mentioned four times. So we're fine, because if anybody tells you they've got a document in which something is only going to be traded and they're only mentioning it four times, that means they're not trading it at all, presumably. If so, any trade deal, if someone says to you, I'm going up the shop, to buy a packet of biscuits. Up the shop, I'm buying a packet of biscuits. I'm buying a packet of biscuits up the shop. I'm buying a packet of biscuits up the shop. If someone tells you that, only an idiot would think that means they're going up the shop to buy a packet of biscuits. <laughs> I think this does matter when we're talking to people. There are, of course, people that say, the trouble is, I'm not going to vote. I can't stand Johnson, but I don't really like Jeremy Corbyn and what I would say to those people I know that clearly you're not amongst those number I would say that's fine you don't have to like Jeremy Corbyn not going to persuade you in the next eight days to like Jeremy Corbyn but just bear in mind the alternative is Boris Johnson <laughs> and the way the electoral system works if you don't vote the next day there is not an officer comes round from the election to say 
Oh, Mr Turnbull, we noticed you didn't vote, which must mean you don't like either of them. So would you like to put someone that you'd like forward to be Prime Minister? <laughs> Maybe the man from the co-op? Or perhaps Stacey Solomon, as we hear you like her? That's not the way it works. If you don't vote Labour in this... Uh, in this constituency, the alternative will be Boris Johnson. And when he's selling off the NHS, when he is ripping up all the rules, because every day Boris Johnson, uh, 50 times a day, does something that 10 years ago would have disqualified him from ever standing from the merest parish council office, this maniac, this misogynistic, <laughs> filthy, racist, scumbag, pig person, this Etonian <laughs> overprivileged dog is going to get in if you just sit there and don't vote. So I don't give a shit if you don't like Corbyn. <laughs> yeah! Come on! Sometimes in life you have to vote for the thing you don't like a bit to stop the thing that's going to fuck your life up. <laughs> So if you can remember those words, <laughs> starting with that door up there, thank you very much. Thank you.